thank you for taking time to discuss the Intention Foundry. And I'd love if you could begin just by introducing yourself and uh, telling us a little bit about what you do at ECLS. My name is Jovan Bickerstaff. I am the Senior Program Officer on Higher Education Initiatives at ACLS. And my charge is really to think through creating and implementing initiatives to advance new directions in higher education. Can you tell us a little bit more about what the Intention Foundry is? Sure. So the Intention Foundry is funded by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation and ACLS received a grant uh, of funding of $2 million grant from them before I was at ACLS. I began in October, 2020. And the aim was really to bring together three constituencies in our ecosystem that rarely interact. Our emerging scholars of various ranks um, who we're well known for interacting with via our fellowship programs. The learned societies are now 78 learned societies um, who clearly are a major part of what we do, they're in our name, um, as well as the various university collaborators and administrators and interlocutors that we work with in our programming, including our 40 member research consortium. Joy Connolly and James Shulman, um, when they applied for this grant, were really thinking about how do we create bridges between all of these groups that we work with in so many different ways, but that rarely have an opportunity to come together and speak with one another and to bring that brain trust in the room purposely and purposefully to think about issues of justice and anti-racism and equity that are central to what all of them do, but are very, very challenging at times and sometimes uncomfortable issues to grapple with. And so a big part of revamping the Summer Institutes into if was making sure that those scholars who are most affected, scholars of color, first generation scholars, scholars who are in some ways marginalized and not well supported in the academy, to make sure that they were centered and not just at the table, but to make sure that they were instrumental in setting the agenda are there any themes or kind of reactions I know um, that we can share that have kind of emerged from the first set of sessions? I think that the framework was helpful, but one of the, the, the greatest amount of feedback that I've gotten back is that being with the people in the room, being with that brain trust for the society scholars, seeing that the leaders weren't just enthused they were captivated by the kinds of things that were being presented. And they were willing to do what is very hard for many of them because they are problem solvers. But they came as listening and learning advocates. Equally so, I think it was powerful for them to come together with other scholars at different stages of their careers who are grappling with the same challenges to know that oh, I might feel like I'm in an echo chamber in my individual institution or in my discipline, but other folks are grappling with these issues and some of them have found ways to navigate and address them. But I also think that there were lessons that we learned at ACLS about the places where we might be able to intervene, the ways that our position as a convener matters. And so, I think that now as we enter the second stage, uh, we've done our spring and now we're entering into our summer sessions in June, where we're inviting university interlocutors to come to the table with us and to think through the things that they see and they understand because they are always working with all of these different constituencies. And so thinking about the ways that we can amplify the efforts that work 
distill best practices and ways of doing and being, but also find new inroads for possibilities for what can be done with societies, how we can work it across different kinds of systems in higher education, in scholarly life. I think the possibilities have been the thing that have been most powerful for me and for a number of us at ACLS to see and witness. Thank you so much.